Hi, Neil St. Pierre, and today we're going to show you how to calibrate and validate your SW Line BenQ monitor with Palette Master Element software. This software you can download from the BenQ site, and you need um, a device to actually hardware calibrate your monitor. What's the advantage of calibrating with hardware calibration as compared to a normal ICC profile? Well, that lies in the uh, the fact that your hardware calibrated monitor does all of the color work inside of the monitor and not on the host computer. I will show you at the end of the video of why a hardware calibration gives you straight lines of the signals going out from the video card. What that does is that allows you to change the calibration that's in the monitor and since you have multiple calibration slots you can change them between color temperature, gamma, etc and it's not affected by your computer. All of the work is done inside of the monitor. Effectively, you can have multiple spaces for editing video or for press or for doing web work, all within the same monitor with just a click of a button and it will change all of the parameters that you previously measured. That is the real advantage of using a hardware calibration on your monitor. BenQ makes it easy because they have a proprietary software called Palette Master Elements. It's easy to use and I will show you right now. So you have a choice of your monitors and you can only do BenQ monitors even if there are other things listed. Uh, you have a choice of any one of the devices that are in the list. I personally use the X-Rite i1 Display Pro because it's the fastest instrument out there and it gives me really good results. If you don't have the green check mark, you can press check sensor and it will go and find your instrument. You have your choice of two pages, a basic page or advanced where you have a few more settings. The second page is really simple. It offers everything you need, profiling or validation. Usually you do the validation directly after you're finished profiling and calibration, but you can always check your monitor to make sure it's within spec. On the display setting page, you have defaults for photography, which is based around Adobe RGB. You also have other, there's a graphics uh, setting for Adobe RGB and also cinema uh, display. So web design for sRGB as well as uh, DCI P3 and video editing for Rec 709, which are the most important ones. You can save out your own customized settings. Uh, it doesn't often work and it doesn't work for me, but you can always try. Now, for your white point, the choices of the white point are D50, D65, or P3. And those, once you click on another radio button, it will go into uh, whatever fields. XY is, is quite interesting because you can actually customize it to, um, say, DCI settings or even a custom uh, setup for your monitors. Uh, Kelvin temperature is here's where you're going to personalize your actual Kelvin temperature. And starting with D65, but you can also go to any other setting in Kelvin that you like. Once you've changed any of the settings, it will say custom settings, and that's where you can save it out as your own personalized, but it doesn't work for me. Now, Adobe primaries are what the monitor and the panel are set up for, but if you're working in um, any other color space, you can actually target it directly, and you probably have a little bit finer precision. So for most photographers, you want the maximum of color, so Adobe RGB is good. Uh, luminance, that's the most important thing, what you're setting, and I recommend that you set this to around 120 candela or nits um, because the, um, the default 160 is too bright. Now, gamma. Gamma you don't really need to change unless you're working in, say, Rec. 709, and then you can change it uh, there as well. There is a setting for L star, which is um, a power curve that's added into the, uh, the actual gamma. And some people have good luck with that. I don't really think it's necessary. Black point. Relative is how you do scaling inside of the uh, profile. So it picks the, um, the actual measured black point and says that's the darkest it will go. And then it scales up from there. Absolute. If your monitor has some problems or if you're working in a very bright room, 
you might see it might appear to be blocking a little bit. Other than that, you have a choice of display mode for uh, XY or UV. That's all there is to it. I just want to say the real advantage of having calibration slots for hardware calibration inside of the monitor are that you can use different color spaces for whatever working environments you're editing in. So let's say that if you're working on essentially web images, then you can do one calibration for say D65 and 120 to 160 candela or nits, which is quite bright and a little bit blue. And then you might do some video editing. So in calibration two, you might set that to Rec 709, which has a higher gamma and a, a lesser color space. And you also might want to do a third calibration for print editing. So you have print matching. In that case, you really want to reduce your brightness down to, oh, let's say um, 80 to 100 candela. And you want to set your temperature to around D50, D55, which is a lot more yellowish. And then if you do a control situation between your print and the screen, you'll have a lot better match. That's the advantage of using the three calibration slots so that you can actually record different color spaces and switch between them at any given time by a click of a button. Usually I use the remote puck, which is behind you. On page four, you're going to choose your calibration slot. It can be calibration one, two, or three. For the 270, you can modify the profile name, system, or user level um, preference for distribution. Profile version, V2 is highly recommended. V4, though, shouldn't give you too many problems. Profile type, matrix is the most efficient for the system. And patch size, small, medium. Some of the possible problems you might have while calibrating, calibrating would be to have the, um, the cover on one display, for example, you'll get an error message, you just have to turn it around. The other big error that people make is not to have a USB down cable from the monitor into the computer. You must have a USB down cable because it needs data communication going to the computer. On the measurement page, we're going to have a little window that appears and you have to just center that on the de device itself. I'm just going to move the the other panel out of the way so that you can actually see what's going on. It's not really necessary because the other the other uh, window is going to stay in the front. So the computer is going to send out a series of patches. At first it's going to create a lookup table before that's registered into the hardware. It's going to send out all these gray patches and it's going to measure the, um, the the white, the black, the grays and it's going to send out another set of validation patches for those. It's going to recreate some tables with corrections and then it's going to send another series of, of grays to make sure that it's done the best it can. Then it will send out the the color patches measure the extremities as well as intermediary colors. Once it's done, you can see the numbers going by <laughs> at the bottom if it's really interesting. It's going to write out another lookup table. And this is with the newest monitor, the 270C, it's quite quick. It's around six minutes com to completion. And with uh, older monitors, it's probably around 18 minutes or so. After the calibration measurements are completed, it will return the values in a, in a window. You can now safely put the monitor back into its normal position, and you'll see that the target values are met very, very closely, and that's typical of Palette Master Elements. It's always very close to the actual set point targets. Before we go on to validate the calibration, make sure you have the right calibration slot loaded. All of the other menus are irrelevant except for setting average and maximum delta E, which will actually show whether or not it fails or passes the validation. You press continue, it's going to bring up the little window again. Just make that centered and click continue. It's going to measure um, 14 known values. It's going to send them out and report back the, um, the actual measured differences of those. 
you know, you can set your average LTE on the uh, roll downs on the left side, and it will say passed or failed depending on where you set that. Now, the maximum in this case is two, uh, 2.11 on the green. The grays all look really good. I think you've got a really good uh, profile and calibration. The average is actually less than one, and there's just the green patch that's at 2.1. You can export this as a HTML file. And we're just going to save that on the desktop and give it a name. And that one you can save for um, for viewing at different times. They don't have a trending inside this uh, profiler. So that's where you save it to. And we're just going to do one other thing. We're going to actually look at the uh, tables inside of the profile. On Mac, it's really easy. You just go into System Preferences and find the, find the profile. Hit Open Profile. And that'll pull this up in uh, Color Sync Utility. And we're going to go down. This We actually made it as a matrix profile. So you can check out your numbers if you're really interested in that. And otherwise, I just want to show you that the um, it gives you straight lines on your calibration. That's the biggest advantage of using hardware calibration. In the end, if your profile after validation and calibration in a hardware sense with Palette Master Element isn't working out as expected, then there's always the fallback. To, so before you do anything, try to make a profile with a standard profiler, say with X-Rite devices. Most of them will be delivered with i1 Profiler. It could be Color Monkey. It could be um, i1 Studio. But they will all give you very good results on a monitor calibration. The only big difference is that you lose your advantages of having Palette Master Element working at a 10-bit depth level with 16-bit lookup tables with the 270. And so you'll be running with uh, less precision and you will also lose your chance to quickly change between color spaces because in an ICC profile, there are the color lookup tables that have corrections built into them. So if you change any parameters, then you must reprofile. That's the advantage of using hardware calibration. Thanks a lot and we'll see you again with another video soon. Subscribe if you like and hit the like button.